Hello and welcome to Teacher Tech. What we're going to look at today is Padlet. I'm just going to do a general introduction to Padlet, how to set up a page, how to share that page, and change some of the, the basic settings that you might want to think about. I'm going to do several videos on Padlet so we can look at different use cases, and I'm trying to keep videos to about 10 minutes, so I can't do all of those use cases and how to set up those pages within that time. One of the things you need to know about Padlet is that when you sign up for the free account, you are limited to three Padlets at any one time, but you can expand that. You can also delete a Padlet so that you have one of those slots available. But if you want to keep more than three at any one time, you can do a Padlet referral. So I get a lot of my students to sign up to Padlet using my referral code, which means then I get more Padlets and that allows me to use it a bit more effectively as a teaching tool. I always tell my students that that's the link I'm sending them, that they're under no obligation to use my link, but if they do, I get another page that I can create and maintain so I don't have to delete them all the time. The easy way to do that is if you click on your little user icon here and you go to settings, right here you'll see referrals and that is your referral link. So if you send your students that link to sign up for a Padlet and if they use it, you get more Padlet pages that you can use. So you're not necessarily limited to just three if you're crafty. Like I said, I always tell them that's what I'm doing, but students have never complained about it and, and it's been very helpful for me. So if we look at just how to make a Padlet to start with, you can see all of your buttons here on your dashboard once you've logged in are right here. You've got make a Padlet, join a Padlet, and then you've got a gallery. Then you have a few things down here in terms of how you can view the Padlets you're looking at. So here are your recent Padlets, the Padlets that just you have made, Padlets that have been shared with you, Padlets you've liked, and so on. So if I just click on Make a Padlet, you can see right away we've got a number of different options, a number of different Padlet types that we can make. So we've got a wall, which is the most basic Padlet where just everything ends up scattered around this online notice board or post-it board. And that's what makes Padlet really useful, I think, because it's so basic. It's just a notice board that I can post anything to that I want. It really makes it versatile. So this is the wall. This is the one we're going to look at today. Um, but you also have a canvas where you can do sort of a mind map and make links between different posts and ideas. You've got a stream where each post just stacks up on top of the previous one. It looks a bit like a Twitter feed. You've got grid, which makes it look a bit neater and things snap to different to rows and, and boxes that you create. You've got shelf, which is one of the ones I use very often when I get learners to create a portfolio of evidence. Then each shelf becomes one of the elements of evidence that they needed. You've got a back channel, which sort of looks like a chat room a map, and a timeline, which is pretty self-explanatory, but really useful if you're doing um, a timeline of events for history or even for the history of education, uh, things like that that you might find useful. So if we look at a wall first, and I'll just show you how to set up some of the basic features of that wall. Once you log in, you can see, I'm just going to move the image here so you, you can see the wall. Uh, once you log in, you'll get this modify tab. We can always come back into it, but the modify tab just asks for a couple of basic bits of information about your Padlet. So this is Teacher Tech, Bedford College Group. Um, and then you can add a basic description. So this is just a sample. wall for demonstration. I can then choose an icon. You can see you've got quite a list of icons that you can choose. Let's go, um, let's do 10. Oh, baseball, I'm American, we need baseball here. All right, so then I can change the web address for my Padlet, which is really useful. So you'll see my 
Padlet page is padlet.com front slash mtinny. Well, then I can change the tagline of that address to the class that I'm using. So it could be you know, level three science page one, level three science page two, whatever. So then it's really easy for students to just type in the URL into the address bar of whatever browser they're using. So it makes it much easier to find sometimes. I can also change the background. We're going to change it to the map down here. I really like the map. There we go. So I can change the wallpaper to anything I want. I can even upload my own image to the wallpaper. And if I just click in there again, you can see that it's right there. You can add your own image. So if you want a picture of your classroom or the workshop that students uh, are often in, things like that. Now there are a few other options I have down here. I can choose the color scheme, the font, those sorts of things. But the ones that are really important to, to look at is attribution. I can display the author's name above each post. I like to turn this on with students, particularly if it's lower level groups, so I know exactly who posted what. I also will often turn on comments so that people can make comments about how useful they found something or if they have anything to add to a point that's been made. Also, a lot of art teachers use Padlet as sort of a crit group where students can post photos of their work and allow other people in the group to comment on it, make suggestions for improvement, that sort of thing. And if you're doing that, having comments obviously is really valuable. You can also add reactions where people can upvote posts and things like that. And possibly the most important two options here are require approval which means that the, as a moderator, you need to approve every post before it appears public. This is good if you're working with uh, level three groups, 16 to 19 groups. If you're worried anybody's going to post anything inappropriate, you can require approval and you can also filter profanity. Those things are, are pretty important tools to have. So when I click next, you'll see my Padlet's going to change and my title is here, and so is my description. What I can also do at any point is if I double click, I can come back into modify and change that title, change the description, change the icon, whatever I want. There's also a shortcut to modify right here in the gear. But there are a few other settings that are worth noting that you have. Most of your other options will appear here on that triple dotted menu. So I can come back in, I can change the format at any time to any of the other formats available. What I will suggest is if posts have already been made and you change format, sometimes you need to readjust the order of the posts and, and things like that so they make logical sense. So be aware of that. I can also jump into exporting this as an image, as a PDF, uh, whatever I want there. I can come back to the modify clear all the posts on the whole thing and invite people. But what I'm going to do here is just show you that you've got the share link here, which gets you to the same thing. Now this allows me to control a number of things. I can invite members. So if it's somebody else who I know has a Padlet account, I can invite them here. I can also set my privacy levels and that's important to know. There are four different ones. Private means you're the only one who can see it and your Padlet is working more as a sort of notebook or diary for yourself. Password means that it's hidden from public, but if I share it with someone, they can get to it. They just need to know the password. Secret means that it's hidden from public. On, people can only get to it if I specifically share it with them. So nobody's going to find it accidentally. I have to send them the link in order for them to be able to get there. Or public means that the whole world can see it and it's open to everybody. So think carefully about how you want to use it. I most often use password and secret. Most of the time I use secret because I'm not really posting anything that's that sensitive. It's about collaboration and things like that. You can also set visitor permissions. So again, we can do can read, which means they can only view posts. If you're doing curated content where you want students to explore the content that's on your Padlet but not make any changes, that's the one you would want to use. Most often I use can write, which means 
that learners can view and add posts, they can edit, they can make comments, things like that. You can also do can edit, but that's more if you're doing advanced collaboration and you want somebody else to be able to approve posts and do those sorts of things. Then they can modify the background and change the settings on your Padlet. So be very careful about how you use the can edit. Like I said, most often you're gonna do can read and can write. Now I have a few options to share the Padlet out with people. So if I want students to start being able to post, I can copy the link to my Padlet right to my clipboard and then send it straight out to students or I can post it up on the VLE up on Moodle so that they can get to it from there. If you're using mobile devices, if you're allowing students to use mobile devices in the classroom with their Padlet, QR code is the easiest way to do it because now they just have this big QR code that comes up on the screen. They can take out their phone, scan it, and it will take them straight to the Padlet. If you have an iPhone, if students have an iPhone, they can just open up their regular camera, show this to the camera, boom, it comes up and says, do you wanna open this page? You can also do that with an Android phone. They can download a QR code reader. We'll do the same thing. The other things you can do, you can embed this onto your VLE page, which means that what they see on the VLE is not just a link they have to click to to get to the Padlet. It's the Padlet itself. So they can just get right in it and start posting straight away right through the VLE, which is really nice. And as I said before uh, briefly, you can also export it. So I can export this as a PDF or as an image file. If you have a lot of posts, it becomes really difficult to read, but it can be quite useful to do that as an image if it's a thing like a mind map or a collaborative project that students have done. It can be useful to have that um, as evidence. So when I am ready to start posting on Padlet on a PC, I literally just double click anywhere and I just give what I'm posting a title. And I can add a description. And from here, I can upload a document. Drag and drop also works. So if I've got a, a, a file open or in, an, in a folder, I can literally drag and drop it to my Padlet and then come in and add the title and description. I can add a link to a website, URL. I can add a picture. I can even snap one live from my mobile device or from my laptop using the webcam. There are a few other things you can do here. I can add a doodle. I can add a, a location, things like that. I can even add to another Padlet. Right now, because I'm on the free, I can't do film, voice, or screen, but um, that's okay. I've never found that a limitation. So what you will find is on a mobile device, most of the time students will have to click on this little plus here where they can just click on the plus and they're in and they can post straight from their mobile device. This is really useful as well if students are doing group work and you want them to take a quick snapshot of what they're working on and post it up on the Padlet. If they're doing perhaps even a poster kind of project or a flip chart exercise, they can take a photo of it, get it up on the Padlet, and then everyone can see it live, which is really useful to do. So that is a quick rundown of Padlet and how to use it. Like I said, I'm gonna do some separate videos on different use cases, like how to use Padlet as a portfolio, how to use Padlet as a, a jigsaw group work exercise, things like that. I hope you have found this really useful. And if you've got any questions, just add them to the comments below and I can add some updated videos or reply to those comments there. Don't forget that there'll be a survey in the link below. So I hope you found it useful and be sure to respond to the survey if you have time. Have fun.